Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Oh, does it feel like we're in the Netherlands, guys? We found a spot with a port. It's a little bit cloudy. It's even spitting a bit of rain here. Uh, we're checking out a bike from Gazelle. This is a Royal Dutch company from the Netherlands. They've been around since 1892. Uh, Royal Dutch is like this designation that the royal family gives to companies that are over 100 years old that have been doing a good job uh, representing the Netherlands and maybe being sustainable, that kind of thing. So pretty cool. I do mention that whenever we cover their bikes. I think it's special and they, they go through a lot of extra steps to create a bike that's high quality. Uh, even the paint, they do like UV testing and stuff. It's pretty significant. And in this case, I, I really like, you'll notice there's like a white cable here for the shifter cable. And then there's a single white uh, bungee here for the rear rack. It's just like a little splash of style. Comes in three frame sizes. We're looking at the jeans blue, and then they have like a coral red and ivory. So three color choices, three frame sizes. I'm on the medium size frame right now, and it's feeling pretty good. I mean, these bikes are very comfortable. This one's approachable because it's a step through and they've got this double tubing right here. So that creates a little bit more stiffness. You don't get quite as much frame flex, but there still is a little bit of frame flex because of this rear rack mounted battery. Note that we have a power pack 500 in the battery bay, but it actually comes with a 400. What they've tried to do with this bike is bring down the price point. We're looking at another Gazelle over here and this one's about a thousand dollars more this is the arroyo c8 hmb internally geared hub mid-drive motor bosch that's what that hmb stands for so you know thirty six hundred dollars whereas this one's 24.99 it still comes with the comprehensive two-year warranty a lot of premium parts and so i'm going to dive into those but i do want to just highlight that again there aren't too many kind of european higher end electric bikes that are sold exclusively through dealers that have the great warranty with Bosch systems that are in that $2,500 price point. And that's, that's really a sweet spot for a lot of people. So some of the ways they brought it down is they've got the power pack 400 that we talked about before. They've got the Bosch active line plus motor versus a performance line, but I'm glad that they didn't just go with straight up active line. Active Line Plus gives you a little bit more torque, up to 50 Newton meters. It gives you 105 RPM cadence support versus just 100, which means you don't have to um, pedal at the higher gears in order to get full power. You can sort of adjust your gears. Say you're coming into a, a hilly section here, like there's actually a lighthouse right over there. You're going up the hill. I frequently downshift, and sometimes the motor can't keep up if it, if it doesn't have the higher RPM support. So I really like that, about 7.1 pounds on that. And then back here on the battery, 6.3 pounds on that. So the weight on this is definitely lower. The bike's about 50 pounds and it's got basically everything you need. I classify this as like commuter ready because it's got the plastic fenders right here. It's got the integrated lights, really nice lights. I like that this one has windows on the sides. It's got this rack that's rated up to 55 pounds. It has traditionally sized tubing so you can put panniers, pannier blockers. They've even got a built-in frame lock right here and it's keyed to match the battery pack. We've got reflective sidewalls on those tires, puncture resistant, and the tires that are on this bike right now, they say Continental, but I was talking with someone from Gazelle and just checking out their spec, and I think it's supposed to come with the Schwabi Energizer Plus, which is what this bike has. Both very good tires. And, and again, you kind of look at that bike, you look at this bike, you're getting a lot of the same stuff, like your, your experience is still going to be very good and I'm always impressed by things like this we've got these nice double walled aluminum alloy rims gazelle branded right here with reinforcement eyelets so that's that little circle right there so the rim won't crack if you're riding with heavier gear or just over the long term it's going to be a little bit a little bit sturdier Shimano hubs we've got these extra strong 14 gauge spokes 36 of them black rims machine sidewalls on these rims here because it has hydraulic rim brakes. This is the Magura HS22. Hydraulic is great because, you know, there's a longer distance between the rear brake versus the front brake. So a lot of times with mechanical brakes, the wire will stretch over time and it's just 
requires more hand effort. These ones require less hand effort. They're very consistent. They give you a lot of power when you brake and they've even got adjustable reach. So that's that little kind of like a barrel adjuster thing right here. So you can bring these in a little bit if you're someone with petite hands or maybe you're wearing gloves because it's raining and cold, which is the case right now. But again, we're doing great. I, I'm actually having fun with this. It's awesome to have bikes with fenders and lights on a day like today. And you know, it's kind of winter time when I'm filming this. So uh, it's just nice to have a bike that's that's ready. It's, it's equipped for that. You've even got a little flick bell right here, adjustable angle stem. This is about 90 millimeters and it's a quill stem. So it kind of goes up and down as well as adjusting like that. And these nice ergonomic grips with the swept back handlebars, really good ride feel. Um, it does have, I think this is Shimano Acera. Yeah. Trigger shifter, which is nice. Um, you know, nine speeds here. I was expecting two way action on the high gear, but it doesn't, it just, you pull it, you can't push it, which, you know, it's, it's minor. That's the way SRAM is on most of their stuff. So you still have multi-step three shifts with the low gear, a lightweight, decent Shimano Altus cassette in the rear, 11 to 36 tooth. So a decent spread right there, nine gears. That's great. That's plenty for getting around town, uh, climbing hills if you need to. And then a Dior derailleur. So this doesn't have a one-way clutch or some of the fancier stuff we see on mountain bikes or high-speed electric bikes, but it's definitely a step up, uh, something like the Tourney or the Altus or the Acera. This is Dior, so it's, it's nicer, it's lightweight. You can even just looking at it, you get a, a sense for the higher quality. Uh, it's very traditional in terms of, again, a rear hub here, uh, nine millimeter quick release skewer, quick release on the front too, so you can adjust that. Maybe take the wheels off to do quick, quick service or something. That's always interesting to me because right here with the seat clamp we don't have quick release and maybe that keeps people from trying to take your saddle 27.2 millimeters on that seat post right there versus the actual seat tube it's like 29.8 very unique size I, I really haven't seen that anywhere else and then see that silver piece that's a shim so they've adapted it to fit just right for this very traditional uh seat post width now I say traditional and I'm really calling this out because you could swap that out for a suspension seat post and then you can get that full suspension feel. We do have a really nice Selle Royale, sort of an upgraded saddle with the rubber bumpers and stuff, a little bit wider. It feels great. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you would really, depending on your, you know, your sidewalks or your streets, you may or may not actually need a seat post suspension. You do have a nice suspension fork up here. Um, I would call it basic. I mean, it's nice to have suspension, but it's basic. SR Suntour, this is the CR7V, and maybe that's designating like V brakes. In this case, it's actually, you know, it's the, the hydraulic rim brakes, um, whatever. 40 millimeters of travel, 25 millimeter stanchion. So they're just, they're kind of tiny. You know, you get up to mountain bikes and it's like 30 or 32 or 36, you know, really thick, and that's gonna reduce stiction. It's gonna give you that extra strength because they're longer travel. With this one being so short, I guess they're just saving material and weight and it comes back to that 50 pound uh you know weight of this bike I, I think that's pretty fantastic you know overall they've chosen really well on things there are a couple compromises there's no lockout here but there is this preload adjustment so if you weigh a little bit more you can kind of preload that spring and that way you're not going to be bottoming out or kind of bobbing as you pedal so that's nice there is a little bit of adjustment there but otherwise a very basic fork um, and then the headlight as nice as it is to have those side windows, I'm just gonna power this up for a second here. There we go. See, it's got that side window, so it shines from the side in addition to the reflective tires. Um, it's attached to the arch of the suspension fork. So Chris, will you actually kind of push down on the, the top of the bike? See, so the bike is suspended and it's gonna go up and down, but the light's gonna go like this when you're going over bumps. And so there's a little bit more rattling. It'd be nice if this was up here or whatever. It's, it's a minor complaint just i'm kind of picking through this because so much of this bike is just perfect even on the fancier bike um, gazelle has mounted that on the moving portion of the suspension but both of these lights they point where you aim this one also has the side windows maybe a slightly nicer upgrade same thing on the rear the rear light over here you know on the Medeo t9 is it's just two LEDs, which is, I've seen some with just one. It's got a big reflective surface. It's below the battery, so it's not gonna get blocked by bags or anything like that. And then we've got this great kickstand. I love this. It's positioned well clear of the left crank arm and it's adjustable without using tools. So there's like these little dots on the backside that you can just kind of push in and then adjust this. And we did that 
in order to take pictures today and it's it's working just really well um seems like there's even an extra mounting point here so maybe you could put different widths like a 20 millimeter and a 15 millimeter or something for different uh different kickstands very cool i think that's that's a pretty good overview it's nice to see a little battery info like led readout there we got the the locking port and stuff down here um, while we're while we're back at the motor here, it's just it's so small, it's compact, it's quiet, but it's giving you the same advanced feedback with the motor controller that all the Bosch mid drives do. So it's measuring your rear wheel speed with that little sensor right there and that little magnet when it passes. It's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second, which is just phenomenal. And it has shift detection, so it's it's actually measuring like trying to reduce surge as you pedal and you go like pressure less pressure pressure less pressure the, the motor is fairly consistent feeling and then when it senses a spike in pressure it says oh they must be shifting i'm going to ease off and try to take care of that drivetrain right there and by the way 38 tooth steel chain ring in the front we counted those teeth it's got that nice plastic cover so your pants aren't going to get all you know wet and greasy and stuff and that's that's nice on a day like today where you're maybe you're wearing pants or you've got versus shorts um, versus like a dress or something that could could potentially get down here. You don't want to get that that tangled up and stuff. So, you know, coming back to the, the price savings, we talked about the battery being lower capacity, 36 volts, 11 amp hours versus 13.4 on the power pack, 500. And then it comes with a, a slightly smaller, lighter weight, slower charger. So this is the, the standard, you know, four amp charger that comes with the more expensive bikes. Um, one of my favorite chargers on the market because it's like 1.7 pounds, and you know you just you fill faster and that's important if you've got a 500 watt hour battery pack in this case two amp chargers is, is kind of fine right but i was a little bit confused because it's like sportive trekking and trekking to, that's like touring and like going longer you're gonna need a couple battery packs if you really want to tour or go trekking with this thing but you know the point is I don't know. I, I talked to one of the, the Gazelle guys earlier today and I was like, what's the deal? You know, he's like, well, we just want people to know this isn't just a cruiser. You know, it's fairly capable. I think that's kind of a marketing thing personally, because to me, and I, I'd be proud of it. I think this is kind of just a relaxed cruiser. It could be a neighborhood or whatever. I'm here with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes hanging out in Long Beach. What do you think, man? Is this really sportive trekking or you were, we were both on that call. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it really depends. I mean, you know, some people are going to go trekking and that sort of thing on bike trails, which are mostly paved. I think that if you're going on more off-road stuff, you might want a little bit of a wider tire, some more yeah. suspension, different things like that. But I think it's becoming more and more common that people are doing this kind of lightweight, even like credit card touring, as it's called. Oh, where yeah. You go and ride <laughs> to a hotel, stay overnight, that sort of thing. And We were talking about that yeah. on Catalina Island the other day. You yeah. were going with your wife and like having a day and exploring the island. This would be an excellent platform for that because you're upright, you're relaxed, you can enjoy the sights. But like you're saying, I mean, the tires on this, this is 700C. It's 28 inch by 1.75. So, you know, maybe you get up to two or even 2.125 and that gives you a bit more stability. This right. is about efficiency for me. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is, this is just a really approachable bike that's pretty well-rounded and, and the reality is you can't do everything really well. Yeah. So I think they do many things well, but yeah, as far as, you know, being that more like off-road sort of trekking bike, it's maybe, maybe for some people maybe it's yeah. it's fine. But you know, I'm just so. teasing them because it's you know sportive yeah. trekking. It's like uh, you know this is their price point model, twenty four ninety nine, and it is great for what it is. But um, you know there, there is that little bit of frame flex and stuff. It's still great to have plenty of cargo capacity. One thing I feel like they're missing here though is bottle cage bosses. Like they could have put some up here, maybe right here. You can get those like anywhere adapters, but because this tube is a little bit elongated, kind of oval, you can see the internally routed um, cables and they've got that nice strip so they're easy to access. Um, I just feel like it would have been nice to have bosses so you could put like a folding lock or something. As is, you're gonna need like a trunk bag or you're gonna need to put them in, you know, like I'm wearing a backpack today. What other thoughts do you have about this bike that maybe you haven't heard me say today? I mean, you sell these, right? This is... Yeah, well, I mean, this is a new bike. We're particularly excited about it. Um, historically, we've had some other bikes in a similar sort of price point. And I think uh, one thing is interesting that they went with the external derailleur as opposed to internally geared hub. And I think hmm. it is, in that sense, a little bit more sporty. And maybe that's part of where that's these true. hints come from. Yeah, it's very quick, like 
responsive shifting. Right. You know, there there are some trade-offs with that because there's generally a little bit more maintenance involved. But it but it is going to give you that more traditional bike feel, um, which many people really appreciate, particularly in the U.S., where maybe you're not as used to an internally geared hub. Let's go back over here and, and check one of those out. So we have the Shimano Nexus here. You know, it's got the, the grip shifter, the half grip shifter. You can shift it standstill, which is really nice. It's really clean, really durable. This one, eight speed. You know, it, it adds some weight, but you'll notice there's no derailleur hanging down here. So if you lock this thing in a rack and someone kicks it or knocks their bike, even if it tips, these tend to be very durable. And I, I you know, coming back to performance line motor, a little bit sportier, higher torque, that's 63 Newton meters of peak torque, 500 watt hours of battery. A display that's removable right that's a little bit bigger that has a charging port those are some of the differences we are going to go into the display on the other bike in a minute but what are the other things here like yeah i think the one other detail that you talked about a little bit but it's just the overall ride position so this this bike has a adjustable stem this one in particular switch. has this kind of quick adjust stem so you can adjust it kind of very quickly on the fly and you can you huh. know just go to these different positions and that one is adjustable as well but that one you you will need a tool to do that so you don't have as quick of an adjust um but i think that's important i think the overall the ride position is a really big deal i mean we see all the time people come in and they say well i like that bike but i don't want to ride you know all hunched <laughs> yeah. over like this you know and and i have problems with my back whatever this and that and this is really, these bikes are designed to be ridden in that position. It's certainly possible to take a more sporty bike and get you in a more upright position yeah, with a different stem, it. different handlebars. But there's always compromises with that. You know, you have to kind of uh, consider all the details, the overall ge geometry of the bike. Is it designed to be ridden in that way? Yeah. Um, so you really, really have to be careful about that. And I think they do that well. I mean, most of their bikes are designed in that way um and you know even like the fork as you see it kind of curves out a little oh, bit it's raked out right kind so of, that gives oh. you a little bit more of a stable stance chris i'm so glad you know like check this out when you're pedaling by having the wheel forward a little bit you're not gonna have that toe strike on the fender either so that's another kind of a benefit of right that. and and that enables you to give you know a little bit more of an angle to the seat tube which ultimately ends up making it easier for you to put your feet down there's oh, some different yeah. details the minimum and also saddle height. put you in your you know slightly relaxed position dude um, this is awesome yeah you're yeah. i mean you're an expert and you get to see and hear people and what they say when they're test riding a lot yeah so. the one thing that i would say i mean if if i was to ride this bike myself i'd probably want to add a suspension seat Seat post because you are in that more upright seating position yeah as you're sitting more upright you're gonna put more weight on the saddle so um, you know and I, I understand it's probably a trade-off a little bit you know a price and that sort of thing but that's something you know like you said before you know it depends on the terrain if you're mostly flat and you know and you're you're pretty healthy you know maybe you'll be fine without it but my preference would be to have it suspension post it's a good we both you know i've i have some sort of back and neck injuries just from riding bikes and skiing and stuff growing up so yeah trying to take the edge off is always a, a good thing yeah. um do you do you sell any at your store and you recommend one that comes in 27.2 millimeters seat post suspension yeah, I mean, the, the most popular one for us is the Connect previously body float. Um, it is on the pricier side, so if you're looking to save a couple bucks, you could would go with just a basic suspension post, which is going to really take most of the bumps out and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that's something like that's you know, 50 bucks or something like that. It's, it's really not bad, whereas the Connect is like $250. So it's got those special springs for different weights. Uh, one of the more popular ones as well is the uh, the Cane Creek uh, Thud Buster. Oh, the Thud Buster. They're my, yeah, they're kind of like yeah. my old school favorite. They've been around <laughs> for a long time. Okay, guys, we're gonna jump into the display <sighs> now that it's like turned off on us here. Uh, everything here, by the way, is, is very water resistant. So there's a power button right on top. This is the Bosch Purion display. Uh, it's their smallest, kind of simplest display. I pressed it just a second ago and boom, comes to life very quickly. You've got speed at the top. If you hold the minus button and you tap power, it'll change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and back. So that's a nice little tip. Uh, down here, we've got kind of a, a readout that cycles through if you hold the minus button. Right now it's showing the trip distance, but if we hold minus for a second, it says total distance, od odometer 
hold it again, it says range. Now range, it's just blank right now because we're in off. And this is just like a bicycle. You could pedal this thing as a bicycle. There's no reduction gear down here with the motor, so there's no drag or anything happening. It just free wheels very efficiently, not gonna slow you down at all. It's just gonna be a little heavy, okay? But as soon as we press that plus button, we go up to eco mode, range says 85 miles. Wow, that's awesome. And we take it all the way from tour to sport to turbo. Turbo is the highest level, 50 Newton meters of support. 700 or 270 uh, percent feedback now it says 32 miles so you can see there's a there's quite the range there of range feedback uh, and it's based on like your last mile of riding right chris it's like real world the bosch system that's right yeah it's constantly updating which is really helpful when you're out there and trying to predict you know how long you're going to be able to go and there are so many factors i mean even if just having a wet sidewalk if your tires aren't inflated all the way if you're a heavier person maybe you've got cargo you could even potentially do like a child seat right here they have the ones that clip from the side the Thule yep uh seats so there's there's lots that you can do with this thing and then down here we have a battery infographic, very much like we saw before on the battery itself. Five ticks, 20% increments. It would be nice if that was a percentage or 10, 10 you know, ticks for 10%, but having the range menu kind of makes up for it in my mind. And then we have a light icon. If you hold the plus button, you can turn the lights on or off. So that's, that's sort of nice because there are moments where it's like, it's dark and you want it to be dark and the lights could be a little bit annoying. But on the other hand, it's nice to be seen and have that safety. And then there's a walk mode down here. So as long as you're not in off, if you press the walk and then you hold the plus button, the bike sort of pedals itself. And that's gonna be really handy if you're going up a hill or maybe cutting across the grass or you do get a flat tire or something like that. So that's a good overview. You know, again, you can see these two bikes back to back. The frame is just so beautiful over there on the Arroyo. It's a single tube and, and I think it might even have a little bit more reinforcement. I don't remember having a ton of frame flex. This one definitely has some, but it's a lighter weight battery. And this one comes with a little suspension seat post built right in and then that nicer display. One thing that they've got here is a little micro USB port that's active. That one has it, but it's only for diagnostics. And then this display also has a little power meter right there and then it's got a bunch of extra menus so it's like clock max speed average speed trip time and then there's even like shift recommendation so this is my favorite display and some shops can even upgrade you for a couple hundred bucks if you want that maybe you've got like some vision issues and you want the larger screen the Perion's fine you know it's it's easy to reach the buttons i i like the buttons on this one a little bit better they seem to be more consistent but Bosch is a leader in this space. They're part of the reason you get that really good to your comprehensive warranty. And they had to do something to get, to get that lower price point. So this has been kind of fun. It's almost like a comparison review. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of those different details on the, on both of these here, so. They really are. Oh, and you know what, Chris? We didn't actually take the battery off here. Again, one thing, you have to leave these keys in that cafe lock. So this just puts a bar through the rear wheel and so people can't move the bike away. So you have to lock it, and then the key comes out. We just unlock this for a second. Got it. Thank you so much for your help. It's kind of fun to see. And there's a handle built into the bottom of this thing and everything, it's, it's really good. So as far as these batteries go, keep it away from extreme heat. Uh, try to store it at half full or maybe, you know, 20 to 80% is sort of right. the sweet spot so it's not getting stressed. They do sell replacements of these and they have that upgraded power pack 500 so you could potentially get an extra and toss that in a trunk bag and then you've actually got a trekking bike right there <laughs> there you, you can go, go touring go. <laughs> and the cool thing about it you can charge it on or off the bike so when it's off the bike this is the same port as over here which, oh yeah which you would use to charge it when it's on the bike it's a good point and it's nice for people who maybe don't have room for a bike that's near an outlet if you have to actually park the bike outside at the rack. And again, that's why it's kind of nice to be able to take the display too. But you know, these parts are replaceable if something were to happen. And then at least you're storing the most expensive part. Cause I think these batteries are like 900 bucks or something. So you, you know, it's a good idea to take that inside and charge it. Maybe even at work, you could bring it into the office. Okay, so we're back up here. We hit the power button. We do the kickstand. We're basically ready to go. Start it in off mode, take it up to turbo, and let's do it. We just paddle right along.
pretty stable, but you'll notice there's a little bit of wobble going on right now. And that's the frame flex stuff. That's called speed wobble. So it has to do with me putting a lot of my body weight back um, and then having also the, the battery weight towards the back of the bike. It's not a huge deal. I mean, especially if you're holding onto the handlebars. Um, and again, depending on how you're positioning your body weight, but it is something I want to call out because it's one of the trade-offs with that step through frame design um, that they've got going. And here's the, you know, frame flex thing. I can definitely feel it. It's hard to demonstrate when riding, but let's get, I, I want to give you an idea of just how quickly it, sh it starts and stops with the motor. There we go got us up to like 18 miles per hour there it looked like you know it's very capable but this is a little bit more of a casual ride experience uh, and now we've got that that huge hill right there up to the lighthouse so I think I'm gonna downshift real quick here and just try to climb it's doing a pretty good job and this is pretty steep I would not be able to do this sitting down on an unpowered bicycle, that is for sure. Uh, so when it comes to having a commute or maybe riding in an area where we just struggle or there's wind or something, these e-bikes are great. And even though this is, it's not the performance line motor, it's just the active line, it's still very capable, it still, still gets the job done. Here's that lighthouse I was telling you about, pretty cool. Such a neat area around here, right? Birds and everything. Wow. I'm gonna do the off-road ride again. You hear a little bit of rattling because of those plastic fenders and stuff, but that's sort of to be expected. And plastic is a lot uh, lighter weight, fairly durable compared to aluminum, um, can kind of get bent out of shape and steel can rust. So for me, that's that's a pretty good thing. Chris, can we swap off and you hop on that one? Yeah, for sure, let's do it. Take this one away. I have reviewed the Arroyo just a little while back. There we go. Sweet. Let me get in front of you real quick because I want to get that headlight again. Looking good. Hmm. So how's it feeling, man? Yeah, it feels it feels really light and responsive. I I like it. Yeah, I had that same feeling to be honest with you. Like I you look at this and I've been on a lot of these bigger cruiser bikes where it's kind of heavy and it just doesn't feel like a bicycle, but this feels pretty natural. And that upright body position for me is is really key. Did you plan it? I look at your helmet matches and everything. <laughs> Let's go out on this dock if we can. Right. We got a little bit of brake squeaking because the wheels got wet, but we were riding earlier and they, they really weren't. So I was impressed with that too. Sometimes the rim brakes, you get a great mechanical advantage because you're grabbing way out at the edge of the wheel. Uh, but you know, there there is that surface area ugh, compared to uh, like a disc brake or something. I just struck my heel on the rack when I was getting on and off. So that's the, that's the really, you know, like, like the, you know, that's something I call it. The whole point is this is like a step through. We and see I, it all the time. <laughs> it's just so funny. It's just like, yeah, you know, you can just hop on and off like this. People I swinging it, <laughs> trying to get over it. Okay guys, from here you can see those hydraulic rim brakes and then that 40 millimeters of travel. I'm gonna be going across the grass and uh, some of this dock wood so you can get a sense for what that looks like.
Okay guys, from here you got that nice plastic chain cover, but there's a 38 tooth steel chain ring underneath. And then back here, we've got 11 to 36 tooth cassette. You'll be able to see and hear me shifting through some of those gears. We've got the shift detection in action. It's still a good idea to sort of ease off. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting system because you can pedal backwards like that, and that's gonna allow you to do some drivetrain maintenance, but there's a little bit of friction there. It doesn't just like freewheel exactly. There's, it must be turning through the gears. And I've noticed when I'm pedaling and assist is kicked in, when I stop pedaling abruptly, I do feel a little bit of like a clunk. And I think it's that same friction, just sort of like pressing forward for a moment. So that's something that I noticed. And it's really only on the Bosch active line because they use the full size chain ring. Uh, but anyway, let's do this. I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist turbo. So it'll be the most pronounced and yeah, shift through. One takeaway for me is that in order to climb the most efficiently, you really do need to be in a lower gear. And then to hit that 20 mile per hour top assisted speed, you've got to be in the higher gear. It's, you know, the cadence, you just, you kind of max out at that 105 and you can't just pedal faster. The motor stops supporting you. So you, you have to, you have to shift gears a little bit more actively with the active line motors from Bosch and the Yamaha PW system. It's got the, the lower uh, cadence support, so. This is great, man. I've had a, a really good time with this bike and hanging out with you and doing the whole like rainy day review. Uh, but it's good, I, I think. Yeah, somebody lied to us. I mean, they say it never rains in <laughs> Southern California. I, I don't know what's going on. You got to keep it green. I keep it, it green. I guess it's better than the snow right now. But. Uh, guys, I have measured all the specs for this, uh, including like length, width, so you know if it'll fit in your garage. We weighed it myself 50 pounds. We weighed it a couple times to double check that. And uh, that's all back at electricbikereview.com. I welcome your comments as always. Sometimes I miss stuff or maybe you have a different opinion or you have experience because these are brand new bikes. So it's nice to hear from people who actually own it, maybe in the forums or whatever. Have fun out there. I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.